Hello, and welcome back to Crestfallen D and D. Yay! Uh, the Baker's Dozen. This is going to be our gluten talk for episodes thirteen to fifteen, where we just sit down, and we talk about like kind of our post test analysis as to what's going on. Um, uh, we're just gonna just uh, just a for like the the last half or or just the 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 tail end of the last um like episode 15 we're just going to talk about uh noel you wanted to list some things and angela had some questions about the last one uh, as to what yeah. happened last time yeah yeah um, go ahead um, i'm just curious to know um you know what's who a scoop spoke to uh, with this oh uh, i spoke to autumn breeze uh, autumn breeze yes okay. uh what was it, the he was the owner of the manor, right? Yeah, Autumn Breeze and Chilina and it was Fushi the previous was... owner of the 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 uh yeah. Yeah, and Jin Fushi was the ward. Okay, okay. Right. Yeah. And he was the one that was trying to do this like cuckolding basically of the state, so to speak, um, and take yeah. you over that way. Yeah, like... I wasn't even sure who like I wasn't even sure who I was gonna get. Like I didn't even I, I wasn't even expecting a response from oh, Yeah, you rolled the, pretty the well on that investigation to find to see like I was very surprised to see because I remember you gathered all the bodies, threw them into the garden and burned them, right? Yeah. Uh and uh, you rolled really, really high and you were able to find like a, a decent size of his burnt skull still left. Um that was uh you rolled that, high. We just we just found it. <laughs> yeah, uh, that um that's right. Um, that was part of Autumn Breeze's, and you didn't know whose it was until you cast it on it, and it was Autumn Breeze. So you guys got, you got, I rolled some pretty high numbers, so you got very lucky. Yeah. Well, that session was insane with the, nat the natural 20s. Yeah, that was, first that was and foremost, biggest. that. Yeah. That. Like, I think there was like, what, 12 or something? Or 10 plus, at 20? least. It was, yeah. it was crazy. But. I think everyone got like three, two or three natural 20s, probably even more. Yeah, and like, really wild i know i had at least one time where i had advantage and i rolled a nat one for the first time and then nat 20 for the second and i think somebody else had that as well a couple times too it was just like it was insane just the the roller coaster of that so um but the the so a scoop got to ask the five questions and one of them ended up being a uh, an accidental question in between so i don't think i wrote that particular one down um but here are the the four big questions that that were asked and then the responses so the first one that you had asked was why did you infect these people and autumn breeze's response was they needed to see the beautiful flowers who gave the pollen was your second question a friend in high places an emissary of the vodomo Verado, that's the Barad female or core. Dude. Yeah. Sorry, Verado uh, or dude. Quick? Yeah. Um, female core, the female oh. core in charge of day to day, like taxes yeah. and stuff like that. Go ahead, Cam. Of the whole. Podcast. Why is Autumn Breeze's soul possessed by this this plant? Like, why was he acting the way he was after in the afterlife? That's a very good question. Um, um, I, I would like to point your attention back to some of your previous interactions with the plants, being that um, they might be partially magical, but most of what they do is scientific. Like, they actually root themselves into your body change your entire brain chemistry, change who you are, the essence of who you are actually. So it's more scientific than it is magic. There is definitely some magic involved, but it's definitely more like uh, organism. So how the spell works is that it summons the soul um, of the creature back to its body in the last state in which it was alive. So technically mm -hmm. his soul okay, okay. is slightly corrupted or if not fully corrupted by this stuff. Um, granted, there's an argument to be made about whether the soul should be affected by all this stuff, but you're dealing with some very powerful forces. So, you know, weird stuff can happen. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Totally. Sorry, go on. No, um, please. No. Miss Jenny or Noel. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. Yeah. I guess so we that's... address each other by our normal names. Included. Yeah, because you know. Because you're not in game, yeah. Yeah. Hello, Noel. Um, nice to meet you, Noel. Hello, Cameron. So nice to have hello. you here. Angela, you're looking you. lovely this evening. I love your poster work. 
Uh, the third question that a scoop asked was, do you know how to stop it? You know, meaning like the pollen and, and like the spread of it. And the response was the primordial of the earth will have their domain. I, I feel like that's and, Kasuth in a way, like it's primordial. So, Something well, like Kasuth though, and this is a little bit of the other. Well, knowledge. you had a conversation no, a little bit. Did. Yeah, we did with your and sister. We also looked this up too. Mm-hmm. Well, and we looked this like a scoop and Macheni looked this up too. Yeah, we have like, found a book. Mm-hmm. We have a, so, a profile. What is it? A um, con- con- conundrum or no? Um, I forget what you compilation. Call it. No. Oh, collection, like the collection of of like yeah. all those yeah, yeah, yeah. file, like all those old old texts. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah. Like all in a, yeah, a compilation, as it were. Compilation. Okay. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that, but Kosuth is of fire. Pita is of earth. Right. So of like land, least... from what you understand. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So. There was another question just... in there somewhere, uh, but it was like a question that you asked and. Any question that you ask, it was, I think it was in error. Like you asked the question and the thing answered because that's how it works. Any question, anything that you put into an octave statement, there's a bit of a monkey paw there. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah. then the last question was uh, dumped a bunch it's of stuff. For me. Yeah. yeah. And then the last one, you decided to go down a different tangent. I think after discussing with the group just a little bit is the Formian, the proprietor of the earth. And the response is... A primordial the form- or, or the... Uh, I said proprietor. Oh, okay. Because I, I was so tired. I didn't know what yeah. you were saying at the time. I, I, I think <laughs> I interpreted that as you saying, is the form yes. in the primordial of the earth. Yes. Mm-hmm. And the and the last, as before Autumn Breeze's skull, like, disintegrated, was yep. like, the formian is a champion of Pita. So... Okay. So especially... So now, like, thinking back to what we were hearing and talking about with Carver with like some of the symbology and stuff um, or like almost a little tiny, like runic magic that was inherent with the Sakura blossoms was kind of at odds with, but still similar to the water magic that he used and the runes that he used. It's like maybe they're both primordial forces and and things. Obviously not. Do you think this is like an air fire wind and earth type sorry um everything changed when the fire nation attack yeah pretty much <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when earth yeah. wind fire. Like that kind of thing earth wind like, fire water i mean it makes sense and i think you know we have we just we don't have birds an- falling from the sky um the air kokra i should say something mm-hmm. clearly went on there a while back um, during Phoenix's story, um, so that's it. Seems like that's falling into shambles. I, f- I figure that as like air, um, earth. Uh, clearly, something is going on with the earth in a sense. Water, yeah. so much corruption, and what's the last one? Yeah. Well, the earth water. is also still the soccer blossoms. No, water is the fire. corruption. Fire. Fire. Mm-hmm. The argent flame. There we go. They're the <laughs> chaos. <laughs> They are chaotic. Um, but, I mean, I while one of their members is a, you know, follower of a primordial god, I, do, I don't think that they're the sole no. um, <laughs> fire force in the world. <laughs> Just going to throw that out there. I don't think we're that important, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. but it, yeah. But Yet. I think you're right. <laughs> yeah. But I think you're right. I think there's definitely multiple now primordials at odds with each other and, and stuff. So it's interesting. Like, but why? What's what's the purpose and why now? Yeah. What's yeah. So those are good questions. <laughs> yeah. No, it was really good. So along with all the Leviathans going yeah. somewhat crazy in a sense. Yes, just- the purpose. Yeah, the purpical, <laughs> you know. Yeah, like you Dude, was- got the sense when you were talking to Carver that Carver is somewhat of a, I want to say champion or paladin, but like some follower of the Leviathans in some way of these like runic magic and, and like what is. And so he's 
definitely, you saw him transform into like, you know, part Leviathan, as it were. Um, so there's definitely something going on there. I, 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 if you if you would analogy it, or it's kind of a pardon me an a, analogous to the, a lot of our own worlds entirely undiscovered like in Earth uh, in our world in real life uh, and it's just because it's beneath the waves and there's so much we don't know about it um, so it's, it stands to reason that there's probably a lot to know about what's under the waves going on right now granted you have been like pretty much centered around the Twin Isles where you know, there's a lot of sailing there's a lot of you've delved down in the water several times um, there's probably still a lot more to know um, and then you have um, what's going on in the land, like the Sakura Blossoms are doing a lot of what's going on in the land, and then this corruption of the deep with all these Piscean creatures doing a lot in the water, like there's stuff going on. Um, and with the sense that you got from Carver too, as and that, that Carver shared with you, is that these two forces seem to be at odds um, of what's going on with the Sakura Blossoms and the, like the, the, the land primordial dealios and the corruption of the deep. Um, which is new to know, like it's a little bit, it's a qu quite wild because I believe at one time you thought, oh, like, oh, what, maybe this is all linked into one thing, perhaps, but they are at odds. So. Um. Right. Also, can I just say it was super fun fighting dinner? Ah, uh, yeah. Now, how'd you guys like that? Uh, I liked that a lot. <laughs> what was I the did, first one? The first one was like the, we the teeth dude. I kind of felt like I was you were playing doing a food fight yeah the first one was a gibbering mouther <laughs> is what it's called it's like they got this doughy musculature creep body that just kind of like sloughs off itself with a bunch of mouths and eyes that are constantly like whispering insanity um and uh so that was like your little uh like filet sashimi aperitif uh, and then yeah. you fought the troll, which you were like, what the fuck? Why won't this thing die? And you just kept stabbing it and you just stabbing it and it wouldn't die <laughs> um, because it has regenerative abilities. So you have to. Yeah. And like, I think that there were, it, it was fun and it was like, we were playing with our food, like what you were saying, Angela, but like there, yeah, but there were absolutely points where I was like, oh shit. What did we sign ourselves into? Like, sign ourselves up for? Yeah, I like love that. And then, like, getting squeezed possibly by this jello mold, yeah. you know? Like, I love it when what? Sean was Sean was like, hey, whatever. It's not like we're going to do anything else today. <laughs> and, and Angela was like, don't say that. Don't say that. And then, and sure enough, go like, hey, that was just appetizer. Go on for the main course. And he was like, oh no, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> What did he, he should use have known his, better. Did he used all his spells. He used all of his like special abilities and quite a lot of his spells in the very first battle. I, I did that in the second battle. I'm like, there's no more. There's no more. There can't be any more. Yeah. Nope. What do you but have still for dinner? You have dessert. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, just, well, I, did like I thought we had a choice. He's like, nope. nope, nope, nope. Yeah, they go like at, at the Sean was like, Can we take a break? And 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 Boo was like, No, nope. and he presses the button and boom, <laughs> up the <to> dessert. <laughs> Thank God for concentration. <laughs> right, concentration, yeah. yeah. Well, we were getting hungry. But... Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's fine. I know real life sometimes, but in game, she was like, well, no way. <laughs> we're still in her show. Like... Keep the momentum going. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you were talking about all these entrees. I was like, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> I feel like I'm <laughs> like slight searing. Uh, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, a troll hindquarters sounds really good right now. Tro Troy mm. cold cuts and, and uh, Troy filet mignon sounds really good. How many people actually die women. for that entertainment? <laughs> I mean, so we'll see. That was, that was pretty much my thought process. I'm like, that's that's dangerous. Yeah, uh, it's called Just violence in Vindaloo. It is in I the know, name. Still, everybody signs a waiver, <laughs> and she still takes a cut. Like what? Yeah, well, so here's the deal. I mean, that's that's because just like you would share ch share tips in a, in a in a restaurant with like everybody who worked that night. Same deal. Uh, she's working that night, so she takes a cut of it too. But she's like, oh yeah, I'm, don't mind reimbursing you for everything. It's all in good fun. Um, she's she's not dumb either. She just like she likes that honor of the battle, defeat the thing, and catch the thing that you're going to eat. That's the best part of it. Like, and then that way you have like the idea. So um, you can choose not to fight the thing but somebody most likely her she's she has all her dishes 
alive in the back and she fights and kills them when like made to order uh and then and so so she she knew you guys were like strong traveling adventures she's like oh, okay cool i've been saving a couple of these more difficult ones um you catch a slime <laughs> or a gel or an ooze you mean um, ooze. yeah, yeah you pop, pop it in a box and transport it <laughs> pop it in a stone box I just, I just imagine like her actual um restaurant is just this tiny little you know 10 table uh, in the front and then this, <laughs> it like, is Amazon type warehouse in the back, just filled. Pretty with much, yeah. Fucking... It's, it's like underground, and it's got all these like the moving yeah. cogs that make the make the like the, the move the tables. So there's like glass, tempered glass on the top and the bottom. She's in the rich district. She has the money for this. Obviously, um, somebody was like some some rich person was like this idea is dope as shit. Here's as much money as you need. Fucking do it because that's their gladiatory arena. Right. For rich people mm -hmm. is to watch someone defeat their meal and then they get to eat it. And they're like, oh, it was wonderful. So like, I feel I'm living vicariously through adventurous lives by watching you defeat the creature and then devouring it myself. You know, uh, so that's exactly mm -hmm. something that would like stupid rich people would pay for. Uh, like the one percent would absolutely pay for that because they've got what else are they going to spend their money? I mean, they're on, all right? nobles there. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we should have gotten like dinner. Like we should have gotten a little portion, you know. Oh, like, you, you, no, like you guys we were, were totally served a portion of it. Uh, yeah, okay, no, good. she she kept cool. it under a heat lamp for you after, after everything was done. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, no, we don't get to see the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty cool. Like you, you took out the troll's lungs. You were like, maybe if we stop it from breathing, and then the lung was growing back. She's like, ah, oh, yeah, three lungs, great, more meat. Uh, that would be so. Oh god, yeah. don't ever do that. That'd be so torturous to have a troll as something you're harvesting. Cut off one of its legs, let it regenerate, and then just keep using Dude, it. I was for... thinking of that in the shower. I'm like, uh, yeah, money maker. <laughs> yeah, money maker, yeah. but also torture. Please cruel? don't do that. Don't do that. Don't write a campaign where you do that. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. That's... I mean, you could do that for a villain. Like, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, it's very but... like Promethean. Because kind of you know, like how uh, what Sean did in the other campaign, where he just turned himself into like a horse and sold himself, and came back and turned himself into a horse. Oh again. yeah, uh, a the druids. So that's, a, that's a common druid trope <laughs> where we're like, yeah, I'll I'll yeah. I'll be shaped into a horse. You sell me, I'll run away, and we just rinse and repeat. <laughs> Yeah, we never actually did that. Though. We didn't I mean, actually we do that. You guys talked about it, but you never yeah. did it. Uh, yeah, they were no, going to sell we used over our Shauna. Make, make, uh, yeah, we made uh, used Sean's too nice make... of a guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with all his characters. What did you say? You were about to make something. Sorry. Um, we used Druidcraft to grow and pro populate uh, or propagate marijuana and sell oh. it that way, or like. You know magic mushrooms so you know things that are legal in certain areas oh that's true yeah you did uh yeah. use druidcraft and, and plant growth to to yeah. like proliferate hallucinatory uh psilocybin like mushrooms you absolutely did that and you even did ones that made dicks grow bigger uh if i remember correctly yeah. <laughs> from yeah. a previous campaign hey this is the yeah. good content guys um <laughs> yeah but it, you know so if your your horse selling thing for being a druid doesn't work out, try, try you know, try drugs, kids. Don't try drugs. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Why would you no. say that, TJ? <laughs> no. Okay. Um, our content's for eighteen and older, so uh, yeah. it's legal in some places. Anyway, it's legal so. in some places. <laughs> He's saying just there yeah, drugs. Oh, oh okay. Uh, scratch that. We can edit that out if we really need to. <laughs> no, it's fine. We don't have to. It's fine. Uh, it's part of the joke. Um, <laughs> right. So a bunch of the information that Carver gave you was quite enlightening. Um, you got to learn a little bit more about the corruption of the deep, which was helpful. Um, a yeah. scoop. Uh, or Cameron. Uh, odd to see Koatoa again and in such odd constraints as well. I will have to, I'll say. Yeah. Um, what is what? How does a scoop feel about that? I mean, the mutations are weird, but I mean, with the corruption, it's pretty, he kind of, he would assume, I guess it was there, you know, I mean, you can't, you can't, if you, if you live in the water, you're going to have it, especially with always being just 
like look but the whole group's around corruption all the time we could be corrupted any any second so all right yeah. uh, this and, thing's sorry go ahead scattering throughout the earth or uh crestfallen <laughs> right do you feel conflicted conflicted about that at all like given that it was kind of like an adoptive parents or anything that like you know fighting those guys was that a little tough for him or no it's half half like he was kicked off a boat but at the same time he annoyed them <laughs> <laughs> he's uh he's not really good with the flu Anymore. You did all right. You did all right for the one. You played hot cross you know? buns. You did. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that picked up in the um the home session. It's funny. <laughs> it was just me blowing them. That I played hot cross buns um, at Sean's, and then when I heard you, I was like, "Oh, so I'm not that bad." Wow. <laughs> I and I was terrible. I was like, okay, I'm a recorder. I, just, <laughs> I know. I haven't played that in 15 years, maybe more. Yeah. yeah. I was, I was just trying to find the hole in the bottom. That's usually that's usually like my like guide for some reason. Like, oh, there it is. Yeah, so. I handed you a very just random flute, so okay, it, it wasn't a, ra- a recorder, so I'll <laughs> you know. But yeah, you still played it, and it was cool for you yeah. know to do that. In real given life, your situation like, and what had happened to you in the past, it's. I know I lost my ability. Yeah, so <laughs> a lot. Just playing hot cross buns is a is a feat. Um, yeah, so, um, then the, the individuals, uh, so then we get to the scrambling pearl or whatever you would like to call it. That was scrambling conjuration in, in evocation magic, mm-hmm. um, that kind of cut off the teleportation and the messages that they were sending probably mid casting, which is why they ended up in a weird area, but it is odd that they ended up in the well continuum. And how you guys had to pull them off. And the universe was like not okay with that. So the universe was kind of yeah. like resolve that. Which is why like the rift tore open. Yeah, we never really exactly asked. I mean, it was like how it happened. Obviously, it was the pearl messing with it. But like, how did they just all get sucked in immediately? You know, like. Oh, very- I mean, uh, the, the seeker uh, was attempting to teleport them all away. Because how the yeah, spell know, teleportation no. circle works is that if you, however many creatures you can get into the space within six seconds, <laughs> but the spell uh, got interrupted by the scrambling pearl, and as it was in the middle of it being cast, so it, they put them somewhere else, uh, right? But into a but space in between, like actually, like how that happened. Like I understand that that was the oh, like the magic, like sure. Yeah, like how it like actually like mm. engulfed them or something. You know? That would like, probably yeah, be something so. where you might need to like, re-examine the scrambling pearl and um, we don't have it. Bit, yeah, but you don't have it anymore. Yeah. Um, we don't want to fight a shark. And then not only that, uh, remember that like the places of runic power that he was talking about that were in bird poop on your map that have been co- that have been uh, uh, ratified or or. or confirmed as these three locations near the Frusha Haven, the uh, Bagaket Archipelago, and the Sava Atoll, Atoll um, have the same like design and creation aesthetic as the fetish that you now have in your book. And you've never seen anything else or heard of anything else that has had this same aesthetic. Um, which is, which then led you to believe, oh, right, could that be where it's supposed to go? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's still wild. Just and like, everything. are you guys gonna go there and put it put it away or and, and stuff how? Like... And like... how? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot we just don't know yet. <laughs> We've been uh, just running I around be... being a dating <laughs> service for the last. <laughs> I would be remiss if I didn't remind you about the one race that has been uh, resistant to the the corruption. Uh, you oh, remember the, the, the elves. sea elves? Yeah, um, um, they were still corrupted, but they but it takes a lot longer for them to happen, which, uh, which is helpful. Uh, well, it seems like they were. If the I guess statue was nearby, they got affected a lot faster, though. Hmm. Probably. Regardless if they were infected or not. Probably. 
That would that would make a lot of sense. It's weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One of my uh, another thing that I thought was a lot of fun was how Nakano and Machini went on the hunt with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I like yeah. that one a lot. Yeah, I like that too. I felt like we, uh, you know, we did something together, which is like creating a, bit, a stronger bond. Um, mm -hmm. So that it's exciting, and I, I like sort of. I knew what I didn't know what I wanted to do at first with downtime because I'm like that's a long time. I was yeah. gonna think of, like maybe going on a dating app uh, at one point. <laughs> like, like, you just bored walk here. around the streets and look at people and just say swipe left in their face <laughs> you just start doing this at people and they're like what are you doing well, they're like, I, like move. I want you to move out of my way I'm not interested in you anymore I was like I should probably gain a skill <laughs> Uh, I do like in my, my head canon of you hunting to and like harvesting this gorgeous blue stag is well, given your uh, uh, strong tie with death is like this this like very beautiful appreciative ceremony of like, you know, thank you for giving your life towards the hunt. Like, you know, I'll make sure your spirit is cared for and I'll keep it, you know, I'll let it pass through me, that whole thing. And so it's really cool. You now have this this stag head, this blue stag head over the front door of your manor. Um, and I. Um, what did you want to do with the 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 pelt, as it were? You want to like make a rug out of it, or like a coat, or maybe like a drape, something. Oh yeah, like a tapestry on the wall, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah I would. Think that. Cool. Yeah, you can cover one of the stone walls cool. with it if you like near the fireplace. Or would you want to bring it with you on the ship when we go adventuring again? You think? Yeah, I could do that. I'd put it in the it's captain's quarters you. or something. It's yeah. Yours. Yeah. That's true. I don't know. I gotta think about it. Like maybe fold it up and then take it. Take it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, um, now I'm thinking uh, like a couple sessions down the road or who knows how long down the road sometime Nakano's going to be like I pull out my blue stag pelt I'm going to be like oh my god that was so long ago and you're going to wear it like an, <laughs> a, like a, 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 an apocalypse coat from like the um, from the princess bride and just scare people like and the end has been foretold <laughs> right. and like someone sets it on fire and you just scare everybody with all of your limbs sticking out of it <laughs> With the scoop doing thaumaturgy yeah. in the background. <laughs> Page effects. Yeah. Right. <laughs> You guys are quite the performers. Uh, almost in like every arc that you guys have done, there's been some sort of performance, whether it be like a martial performance, a magic performance, a bit like ha -da 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 -da, a deceptive performance, something. You guys are always like, how could we turn this into a show? Um, which has been a lot of fun. Ooh, we've never really been hostile. So it's like, what else can we do? So it's just yeah. like performance, performance, performance. Right. Yeah, it's it, you guys. Are, yeah. You're kind of like a traveling troubadours uh, that can also kill if you, if need be. Right, like we're bards, but without without being bards, without it's, having it's the very, class. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting. It's like that. Just finding that niche, like oh, we're neutral. We're neutral. Don't you know? But, but it's yeah, it's it's been fun. It's been fun doing that. Yeah, and, and it's feel, like I, nice and chaotic too. So yeah. I feel like a scoop is very very scared of the Kano to the point where she, he just listens to her because I think uh, when we were when we were um, was it matching everyone up especially the zoo she's like oh a scoop why don't you get a girlfriend I'm like got it I'll, I'll do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah well I mean Nakano's not like <laughs> that's a very good point it's not that she's unapproachable she's just I oh, mean she's, she's you know, she's got four big spidery limbs, and she has an intense look about her. I mean, her aura is pretty intense. Yeah. I'm close to death. I have spider limbs. Like, <laughs> it's more like if she's if hurt scared of her, then scoop scared of her. <laughs> <laughs> is hurt scared of you? Uh, she's she's not at the no, not anymore. Okay. There have been a couple occasions where she's been like, I mean, I don't want to piss her off. Have you seen her? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you see what she can do? Crawling up masts and doing flips and cutting people's heads off and pinning them to the ground? Like, goddamn. She's the only one that doesn't take shit from Scoop. She's like, nope. <laughs> 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 Walks up to a Scoop, slaps him in the face. No. <laughs> no. 
No respect. <laughs> Zero respect. I like uh, Nakano. She's like, I do what I want. Like, you know, I'm sick of being somebody else's bitch. I do what I want. Um, because there were yeah. like a, quite a few years where you were just like a straight up slave and it sucked. And you were like, I'm never again. Never again. Um, yeah. Great. Well, I mean, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, I want to thank everybody. Thank you guys for being here. Um, and, th- and thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Um, uh <laughs> uh we'll catch you next time make sure you stay tuned to subscribe like the channel um uh, for the next couple baker's dozen episodes and the argent flame and we'll see you around stay safe out there say bye everybody bye i'll see you go bye